Hello and welcome to another Royal Society Publishing video podcast. Today I'm at Newcastle University with two of the authors of the Biology Letter Study, Water-Induced Finger Wrinkles Improve Handling of Wet Objects. Tom, can you explain to us a bit about the background to your study? Yes, so last year, in 2011, I read this paper by Mark Shangizi, who's based in Boise, Idaho, and he proposed a functional explanation for why our fingers actually wrinkle. So what he noticed by reading the literature was that medical doctors had been using wrinkling of fingers as an indication of how well the autonomic nervous system works. So when your nerves to your fingertips are severed, they don't wrinkle anymore, even though the rest, is still, the rest still works properly. Um, and so people have been using that in clinical practice to see if the autonomic nervous system is functioning very well or functioning quite poorly and that might be an indication of how easily you might have a heart attack or something like that in the future. And so what Mark came up with was, well, if the nervous system is controlling this wrinkling, then presumably it's not just some kind of passive property of the skin, it might have some kind of functional um, reason. And he came up with a hypothesis that maybe that functional reason is very much like rain treads on a car tire to evacuate the water from between the fingertips and the objects that they're trying to handle. And so when I saw that hypothesis, I thought, we need to test that. And so that's where, where we started with this. That's interesting because most people would assume that the finger wrinkling was caused by osmosis. So I think from what I've read in the literature, and there's a, a researcher called Wilder Smith who's been doing a lot of research on this, osmosis is important because osmosis gets water into the skin but it's the response of the nervous system to that water entering the skin that is what we actually see as wrinkles. So according to that research, the response of the body is to constrict the blood vessels. That constriction of the blood vessels reduces the volume of the fingertips, pulls in the skin, and it's that pulling in of the skin that actually causes the wrinkles to happen. So unlike what people think is that the fingers actually swell up, the measurements have shown that the volume of the fingertip goes down rather than up, and it's that and it's that shrinking that causes wrinkles. So that's the physiological explanation for how it happens. What we did is looking for the functional explanation for why it happens. And so what was the actual hypothesis for your experiment? The hypothesis that there are rain treads make several predictions. And the first one that has to be met, bef you know, for even before we go to any of the other ones, is that handling of objects, wet objects, should be better with wrinkled fingers than with non-wrinkled fingers. So that was the first thing we tried to do. So the prediction we had was that if we had to manipulate lots of objects with wrinkled fingers underwater, it should be smoother, more easily, or faster than if we did it without the wrinkles on the fingers. So we decided to try that. Yeah, so the participants were asked to uh, pick up the objects uh, one by one using their index and thumb. And they were also asked to center themselves around the marked area here so that they could possibly reduce uh, any effects of uh, visual distortion due to refraction. They had to put each object through the hole in the middle of the, of the barrier and then put it through a hole in the second container. And they had to, to do this for all the objects and they were timed for how long it would they take them to actually move the objects from container A to container B. Uh, in order to induce the wrinkles, participants were asked to put both of their hands uh, in this uh, polystyrene box and through the two holes in the lid and then you had to do this for 30 minutes. The water was kept at 40 degrees temperature uh, as constant as possible throughout the 30 minutes using the polystyrene. And uh, this induced, uh, it, it was the uh, induced the optimum amount of wrinkling that could be induced. So after we had people move objects under different conditions, so either with their fingers wrinkled or fingers not wrinkled, and in water or not in water, we found that when they had wrinkled fingers, they could move objects from water more quickly than if the fingers weren't wrinkled. Interestingly, this made no difference when moving dry objects. So that suggested to us that indeed wrinkled fingers did help to improve the handling of wet objects. And it is specific to wet objects, because dry objects, wrinkled fingers make no difference to whatsoever. And that suggested to us that Shangizi at least may be onto something. We don't know yet whether his rain tread hypothesis is right. So we know it helps handling the objects. We do not know if it actually evacuates the water from between the fingers and the objects. Our results could also be explained by maybe wrinkles being stickier, which might help in water, but might not make no difference in dry conditions where your grip is already quite good. 
So this study throws up many questions, including what is the evolutionary advantage of being able to handle objects in water? What's the next step for your research? I think there's a few directions this can go. One is very mechanistic. You know, how does it work? We now know that it does work. What does it do? Is it indeed a rain tread, or is it some other property of the skin that imp increases the, the handling um, ability with wrinkled fingers? Another direction is what you just mentioned. So is the question, how did this evolve? Is this a human trait? Is it a primate trait? Is it even a, a, an older trait than that? Um, we don't know whether it evolved for handling objects, which is what we tested. Did it evolve maybe, um, because after all, we use our hands for handling objects, but many other animals use their forepaws for walking. So, and of course, we get wrinkles on our toes as well. So it's very possible that it actually evolved to give better traction under wet conditions for running or walking rather than for handling objects. But we can only know that if we start finding out which other species have this wrinkling of their, of their extremities. Um, and by mapping that on a phylogenetic tree, we might build some better hypotheses of why it, why it evolved, how it evolved, and which lineages it evolved. And then, of course, if we can do functional tests in other species, that would help as well in understanding you know, what are the evolutionary you know, advantages for having such a trait. Thank you, Tom, and thank you for watching another Raw Sight Publishing video podcast.